two books. If you don't have them, uh, you'll want them. Uh, they're free. They're out there. And as you get, go out, you can pick them up if you didn't get them. Uh, the first one is called uh, And Gave Gifts Unto Men. I wrote this years, years back. Uh, Ephesians 4 talks about how he, speaking of Jesus, gave, gave gifts unto men. He gave some as apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Notice that he gave gifts, not people, right? Uh, the gift <laughs> becomes the person, or the person becomes the gift. Uh, but he, I, I, my gift, my primary gift is a teacher, all right? I'm also a pastor, so I have those giftings. You have a gift. And what, the, what this book is attempting to do is show you from where your gifting comes and how it evolves out into the gifts of the Spirit of God so that you can minister to people. A lot of people don't understand spiritual gifts or what they're supposed to do or how they're supposed to work. In here there is an evaluation to help you get pointed and directed at your specific spiritual gift. Okay, So that's for you and it's going to come in. Uh, in handy for you over the next couple of weeks as uh, gifts of the Spirit are being discussed and talked about. I wrote this one years ago. Uh, it's, uh, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Now, <clears throat> what I was happening at that time is a lot of people were asking me a lot of questions about tongues, about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, about uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and so forth. And so I wrote this, and on page 13 of it, I, I just answer a lot of questions. I think there's nine specific questions I ask, answer, such as this. What is the benefit of speaking in tongues? I uh, answer, uh, are, you always, uh, are there always tongues when there is a filling of the Holy Ghost? Uh, uh, will the Holy Spirit make me speak in tongues? If I wait long enough, will the words come out of my mouth without me speaking them? So, I mean, all kinds of these questions that people have asked me over the years. And so I hope I mess you up enough today so that you will have to go home and read this just to see <laughs> if there's something really to it, okay? So I so got those for you, and I hope you enjoy them. My gift to you. Now, are you ready for the Word of God? Now, don't answer that too quickly uh, because a lot of people say, yeah, that's why I'm come. That's why I'm here, really. Uh, because a lot of times when we're really hit with the Word of God, we find out we really weren't ready for it. But are you ready? Do you really want to hear the Word of God? Now, we're going to be talking about something today that I think is going to be interesting, at least, to all of us. Let me pray. Father, I ask you to bless us. I ask you to be with us. Father, I so desperately want to share this. And I pray that every ear be open, uh, that we can hear what the Spirit wants to say to us. And I ask you to bless me and help me and help people receive what you've prepared me to share and to teach and to give. In Jesus' name I ask you, amen. Well, I believe that our lesson today is going to benefit us in many ways. Uh, some of us, it'll be like me, you're, it's a refreshing. And it's been so long since we've really discussed these kinds of things. And you're going to say, wow, I needed that. That is really refreshing to me. Others of, of you, it's going to be very informative in that, in that you've, uh, you know, you, you've never heard me talk about the topic I'm going to be talking about. You don't really know how I feel or what LifeGate Church believes concerning this specific talk, topic. And for others of you, you're going to really, uh, you're going to be challenged because we get so embedded in our beliefs and our theologies and so forth that we sometimes, we get so rooted into, uh, into a, a belief that it's difficult to move us. So you're going to be challenged to, to investigate this even further and, and see if it be true. Because what I'm going to be talking to us today about is tongues. Tongues. Um, very interesting thing because I know that many of you come from a background in church that you've never gone through uh, the scripture, scripture by scripture by scripture like we do here at LifeGate, to really look at it. You've been told that it's out of date. You've been told that it's not for today. Uh, and so we're going to, I want to help you. I really do. I want you to see biblically about tongues. Right? So um, <laughs> I feel like that Christians forget the importance of the Holy Spirit. We know he's here, but we really don't know exactly why he's here. We, we understand something about the Father. We understand something about the Son. But what about the Holy Spirit? What's his job? How does that work out? How does this roll out for me, tongues? Because it's interesting because when you, when you study the scriptures and specifically the book of Acts, and it's really the acts of the Holy Spirit, 
And some people want to say it's the Acts of the Apostles, but there are a whole lot more things going on in the book of Acts than with the Apostles. There's Stephen, there's the 12, there's, or the, there's 120 in the upper room. And all of these people spoke in tongues. So it's more, than just, it's more than just the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit through people like you and me. So when you find these people in the Scriptures, you always find them receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So I want you to, to open up. I just want you to listen. Don't build up any walls. Let's just work together. Let's reason together, saith the Lord. And let's see what, what God has to say to us today. So something I want to say is, is that in the Bible, in the Bible, speaking in tongues is as common as the sinner's prayer is today. In fact, it's far more biblical. You won't find a sinner's prayer in the Bible. Did, did you know that? You can, you can look, look at all you want to. There is no place in there where Jesus or Peter, James, John, or Apostle Paul, anybody said, pray this after me. It's not there. But tongues is all over the place. So, let's take a look at it. The Apostle Paul is on a missionary journey. And the Apostle Paul wrote um, the majority of the New Testament. He and Luke together put together mo- just about all of it. <laughs> but, but, but the Apostle Paul, he, he's a, a, an apostle and he's written a lot of the scriptures. So he's on an evangelism trip and he's going through Gentile lands. Now, he's, they've, they've left the area of Jerusalem and Judea and they're going through the Gentile areas. And he comes to Ephesus, an epicenter, a big city in that day. And there he finds some believers, Gentiles. And I want to read this to you. So let's read together in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 and 2 to start with. We're going to be reading all the way through verse 6, picking up at about the middle of that first verse. It says, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some what? Now this is important that you respond to me and you pay attention. He found some what? Disciples. Believers, right? People like you, like me. Disciples. And he asked them. Now he's going to ask them a question. Something's... Why would you ask this? But he's going to ask them this question. He said, now now get it. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Ponder that. Why would you ask that? That's an incompetent question. Well, of course I did. Right? Sure sure I did. I, I believe so. I get it. It's a package, right? You get the whole thing. No, that's the wrong answer. I want you to see the right answer. Here's the right answer. They answered what? No. <laughs> we didn't even know about this. We, we have not even heard uh, that there is a Holy Spirit. And I find that so true today. I find that disciples, that believers, that people that have, that, have, that have known and believed for years and years and years just don't know about the Holy Spirit. And the truth of the matter is that probably 99% of us did not receive the Holy Spirit when we believed. I was uh, 17 years old when I believed. I was uh, a student in school. I became a leader of a life group, of a, of a youth group, uh, served the Lord for several years until I got married. <laughs> and then we got married, started a family, and I got away from God. I was away from God for 11 years. Came back when I was 28 years old. Really gave my heart to God. And even after that, it was maybe a month after that that I received biblically. Now, I'm talking biblically, not talking man-made doctrines. Biblically received the Holy Spirit. Most of you are the same way. Even if you're a tongue-talking holy roller, you, you know, you probably didn't receive the Holy Spirit when you believed. And what I'm wanting us to see here in this specific passage is this, is that Believing, initial belief, initial salvation, and receiving the Holy Spirit is totally different experiences. Just like believing and water baptism is a totally different experience. I want to show you. And this is what we're seeing here. Did you, see, did you believe something? Did you receive something when you, when you believe something? And it's totally different experiences that that are happening here. So let's read on in the same passage, the very next verse. In verse 3, Paul says this. So Paul asked. Now he's going to ask another question. It seems idiotic. Then what baptism 
did you receive? <laughs> and water baptism. What? what? What's the question? What? What? Water baptism. So Paul's p- picking up something that's just not, not working right here. If you believed wrong, if you didn't receive correctly, then let me check out a little further. How about your water baptism? What were you baptized? What what, what kind of water baptism did you have? Uh, So John's baptism, they replied. (laughs) Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. Watch. On hearing this, they were baptized into, not in, but into what? The name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Is that what it says? What does it say? Tell me what it says. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He did not baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this is not a baptism, water baptism course. What I'm wanting you to see is is that we have different experiences happening here. But, But in water baptism, when Jesus, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, he's at ascension. He's about to ascend. And he's, he's about to be taken up. And he says this to his guys. He says, I want you to go into all the world. I want you to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. I want you to make disciples. And I want you to baptize them, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But as you study this out and you get into the book of Acts and you see how they baptized and what they did in baptism, nobody's ever baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not one person. I challenge you to look see. So what's up with that? Here it is. Because the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. The Lord Jesus. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the centrality of God. If you've seen him, you've seen God. So he fixes their baptism. And then he does something else. He baptizes them again. And people have problems with getting rebaptized. I'm thinking, what? It's biblical. Come on. Let's get it right. Just do it until we get it right. So, so uh, he does more than this now. Watch, watch what's happening here. So he, he gets them, he corrects their baptism. Uh, on hearing this, he baptized them in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus. And then it says, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit, a total different experience now, from water baptism and from initial salvation, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they what? They what? <coughs> they spoke with tongues and prophesied. They spoke with tongues, and the gifts started happening. Now, have you ever been asked, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That's not something we ask today, is it? Should we? Come on, should we? Yeah. Do we talk about, well, what were you baptized in? Should we? (laughs) So, uh, what, what what I'm wanting you to see is there are three separate experiences here. Believing, receiving of the Holy Spirit, speaking tongues, and water baptism. Receiving the Holy Spirit is just as separate as an an experience as receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believing, and receiving water baptism. I want us to understand this in in the scriptures, you see, because because most churches today uh, don't teach tongues. They, they say that it's outdated, that that's something that died with the apostles. I guess the Holy Spirit died with the apostles. I, I don't know what they think because it's not biblical. They say that that, it, that ended, that tongues has ceased. And I want to show you as we work through the scriptures today, that's just not accurate at all. Paul says, forbid not to speak in tongues. Don't stop tongues. And, and, and wanting us to understand this, you know, that, that, that it's a, it, either the Bible is true or it's not. I don't care what people say. What does the Bible say? If, is it true or is it not true? Because if it's true and if it's God's word and I'm supposed to adapt to it and live by it, then I have got to deal with speaking in tongues. <laughs> if I refuse to deal with speaking in tongues, I am at the very least restraining the Holy Spirit. I am constraining him, limiting him to what he wants to do in my life, in my family's life, and the people that I have uh, influence upon. So, why tongues? 
What's the importance of tongues? I mean, of all the things that God could have used to show the coming of the Holy Spirit upon a person's life or the coming of the Holy Spirit into the world, why did he use tongues? And so I want to talk about it. I want, to, I want us to look at the importance of tongues. I want to give you four specifics of the importance of tongues. Why tongues? You know, it's like the, the title that I've given you is, is Come Holy Spirit, but why tongues? <laughs> Isn't that kind of what we all think? You know, we want the Holy Spirit, but I don't want those tongues. Well, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so I want us to just look at this, and I want us to see in the very first reason that tongues are important in my life and in your life is because it's a sign. It's a sign that you're a believer. Now, let's look at this. In the book of Mark, chapter 17, it says, and these what? These signs. What's a sign? These signs will accompany, the King James Version says follow. These signs will accompany those who what? Who believe. Now, what does that mean? If I'm a believer, then these things are going to go with me. They're going to accompany me. They're going to follow me. Wherever I go, these things go, right? They're accompanying me. In my name, here's the first thing, here's the first sign. In my name, they will drive out demons. I'm supposed to drive out demons if I'm a believer. How many demons have you driven out? Second one, they will speak in new tongues. That's the second thing. That's a sign. They're supposed to follow me if I'm a believer. Now, <clears throat> it, it says these signs, it, it's a sign, it's not proof, and I want to talk about that more in just a second. I don't, so I'll, I'll, I'll fix that in, in just a second to make sure you're clear on what I'm saying. But this passage right here, if you were to read it, and I wish I had added it in to, to the notes, but it goes on to say, and you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's a sign. Are you praying for people to be healed? Because that goes with you if you're a believer. It also says you can take up serpents. You picked up any snakes lately? You probably have, just didn't realize it was a snake. But, but uh, you can take up serpents, and you can drink any deadly thing, and it will not harm you. What's all that about? That sounds so weird. I'm not going to go around drinking poison. No, what, what, what he's saying is, is you're going to live a supernatural life. And things that destroy and kill some people won't even bother you. Because you're supernatural. You, you pray for people and they get well. You, you handle demons. You talk in tongues. You're a supernatural dude or dudette. You're, 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 you're a supernatural person. And, and wherever we go, we respond supernaturally. And again, it says it's a sign. It's not a proof. <laughs> and what I'm wanting to say here, make sure you hear me say and hear me say it correctly. I am not saying that if you do not speak in tongues, you are not saved. I am not saying that. We just saw, I just showed you in, in Acts 19, that those people believed. They were saved. It's just, they just weren't, they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. They hadn't been baptized correctly. So you, you can be saved and not talk in tongues. That's not what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. If you talk in tongues, you're a sign. If, you, if I hear you talking in tongues, I don't have to ask you, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? If you talk in tongues, I don't have to ask you, what were you baptized in? Oh, that's irrelevant. I don't have to ask you, if you talk in tongues, do you believe in Jesus Christ? You know why? Because we're the only ones that do that. There's no other religion that talks in tongues. They didn't even do that in the Old Testament. Just us. Just Christ followers. Just New Testament people. It's a sign that follows a believer. If I talk in tongues, you might think I'm a little weird. But you know I believe in Jesus. Am I right? And when you got a problem, you're going to ask a tongue talker to pray for you. Because they're wearing a sign on their back. You might as well have a sign stuck on your back and your chest. I am a believer in Jesus Christ because I talk in tongues. Is this how it, It's a sign. It's a sign, and we're the only guys who do it. Second reason that tongues are important is it's a gift. Now, I want you to first of all notice that there is a tongue that we receive when we receive the Holy Spirit. But there's a total another type of tongue that comes upon us for a gift. It's not the same tongue. It's not the same thing. It's a totally different aspect here. Now, 
In the book of, 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 of Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul is here listing grace gifts. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul is lifting spiritual gifts. Different. All come from the Spirit, but one's a spiritual gift and one's a grace gifting coming from the same Spirit. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul lists nine spiritual gifts. Nine of them. So I want to pick it up kind of in the middle of it here of the... Of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. It says, To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another interpretation of tongues. Spiritual gifts coming from the Spirit of God to individuals. Like I told you in this book, you know, he gave gifts to people for the for the work of the ministry, for, for the uh, 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 spreading of the body of Christ. Now, tongues, a gift, is totally different from receiving tongues when, you're, when you receive the Spirit of God. Now, it, I know most of you have never seen tongues in church done correctly. When, when done correctly, it edifies, it exhorts, it comforts. It encourages you. It's not weird when it's done correctly. When it's done incorrectly, you think people are crazy. So, so when, when, when it happens, it usually comes in a congregation setting, and people are worshiping the Lord. Usually it's during, during the worship aspect of the service, and, and people are worshiping the Lord, and the Lord, the presence of God is thick, and you're, you're just sensing his presence. And people have their hands in the air, and they're worshiping God. And all of a sudden, from somebody in the, in the congregation goes, Kila baba ya sander robo kolo baba ya sotai. And dead silence falls over the whole congregation, just like right now. And people are now waiting for the interpretation or waiting to see what was that, you know. So the proper way that it's supposed to be done now is the person who gave the tongue, the gift of tongue, is supposed to be the interpreter. That's the proper way it's supposed to happen. That doesn't happen that way very frequently. I may have seen it a couple of times, but usually a dead silence because the, the person who gave the tongue just throws it out there and now is waiting on somebody else to interpret it, come up with the interpretation of, of the tongue. Well, if it's done correctly, the person who gave the tongue will interpret it. The Lord, your God, says to you today, open your heart and your mind. Receive my spirit. Receive what I have for you. I desire deeply to know you deeper, and it's according to the spirit. And I desire for you to know me deeper, and it's according to the spirit. Would you open your heart and let your ears hear what the spirit of God has to say to you today? Receive my spirit. Open your heart. Open your life. Receive me. I want to pray with you, and I want you to pray with me, says the Lord. I want to sing with you, and I want you to sing with me, says the Lord. Receive what I have for you today. Open your heart and receive God's word. Let it be planted and bring forth fruit, 30, 60, 100 fold. And when it's done correctly, it's edifying. It's comforting. It's not weird. Um, now, if the person who doesn't uh, give the, the interpret, uh, give, gave the tongue doesn't give the interpretation of tongue, hopefully someone else will that will have the gift of interpretation will give it. Now, you've probably heard that you're only supposed to give three tongues in a service, right? You only can have three tongues in a service. You've, you've heard that? Anybody heard that? Okay. Four? <laughs> anyway, so, so we, we you know, but, but that's what's said. That's not correct. That's not what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14. Here's, here's what Paul is saying. If this person who gave the tongue, there is no interpretation, the person doesn't interpret it, or nobody in the, in the congregation interprets it, then they're supposed to give it a second time. And if they, nobody interprets it again, they give it a third time. And then Paul says, and if nobody interprets it, sit down and be quiet and just talk to God yourself. This is, this is the way it's supposed to happen. This is decently and in order. So, so what I'm wanting us to, to understand here is there is this gift of tongues 
that is given to us for a congregation. And what it is is that God speaking to his people, God speaking to the congregation of people, God, God coming out and with, with a word from the Lord. It's an amazing gift. It's an amazing thing that God gives to, to his body and to his, to, to his people. And so you perhaps have the gift of tongues. I, I've only known a couple of people who truly had the gift of tongues. But sadly, they didn't have the gift of interpretation. <laughs> and, and really, I, wanted, I want uh, people to, when they give the tongue, to, to, to bring forth the interpretation as well. <laughs> uh, so, so this is the way it's supposed to be done, done correctly. But... Paul says this, as even though, and, 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 and if you've been around Pentecostals much, or Charismatics, you've probably seen it out of order. I've seen it out of order. And though Paul is dealing with the Corinthians because they were out of order with it, he never, not one time, said don't do it. Even though he says if you get out of order, never stop it happening. Never stop it. I want you to read this with me. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38. He says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be what? Ignorant. ignorant. Now, what is he saying here? He says, you can be ignorant about the things of the Spirit. You can be ignorant about tongues, and this is what he's really talking about. You can be ignorant about prophecies. You can be ignorant about the things of the Spirit if you want to be. Then just be ignorant. But you don't have to be. You can really understand this. And he goes on. Wherefore, brethren, covet to what? Prophesy. He says, this, you know, this, 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 covet to prophesy. And forbid what? Forbid not to speak in tongues, speak with tongues. Don't stop tongues in the church. Let all things, though, be done decently and in an order. But I ask you a question. What has the church done with tongues? Have for the most part we forbidden them? Now, this convicted me. This convicted me because I'm the leader. And what I have done is steered us away from the things of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. I've done, a, I've, I've, I'm, I'm sort of guilty here. If that were to happen, we would, we would, we would, we would handle it correctly. But, but I, have, I have messed up. I have driven, uh, uh, steered us away. I want to show you this. It's not in your notes, but it's, it, it's right there in the same passage of, four, of, of 1 Corinthians 14. And it's, it's right here, just a couple of verses from the one we just, we just read. So, Galen, would you put that up for me, please? It's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. And here's why. Now, this is, Paul says, he comes to his conclusion, and he says, here's what should happen in church. He says, what then shall we say, brothers, when you come together... Like we are right here. He says, when you come together, everyone has a hymn. Okay, we did, we sang. Everyone should have a, a, a word of, of, of an instruction. That's what we're kind of getting now. A revelation. A what? A, a what? Have you got one? How many, how many should have this? Everyone. A tongue or an interpretation? Now watch these. This is what got me. <laughs> he says this. All these must be done. Why? To bring strength of the church. Why is the church so weak? We've stopped tongues. We've stopped the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Oh, it's, we're, out, we're, we're beyond that. That's outdated. The church is strengthened by this. So that's the, the second thing. It's a gift. I've got to fly. Number three, speaking in tongues is an amazing. I want to do this one, and then I want to, I want to pray for people. Uh, speaking in tongues is an amazing way of, of, of prayer and praise. It, it's the most purest, powerful way that you can pray or praise. Pray, pray or praise God. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us how he does his, does his uh, prayer life and how he does his praise life. And he does it with tongues and his understanding. Here's what, here's what we read it in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. It says this, for if I pray in a tongue. What's he doing now? He's not bringing a gift in a tongue. He's not receiving the Holy Spirit. What's he doing now? He's praying, but praying in what? A tongue. So now we've got three, three important aspects of tongues. Now we're praying in tongues. So, so he says, when I, when I pray in a tongue, what's praying? What, 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 what does it say? My 
Spirit prays. What does that mean? My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What's, what's he saying? Listen, the purpose of your mind is to reason. Tongues do not reason to your mind. And therein is the problem. We can't get past our minds with tongues. We can't make that make sense. Paul says, I understand that. And so what I have to do is kick my mind out of gear. I have to bypass my mind to get into my spirit. So I can pray in my spirit. i got to get my mind out of the way. And he says, it's, it's, my mind's unfruitful. It's out of gear. It's, it's, I'm bypassing it so I can pray in the spirit. And when I pray in the spirit, I am praying the purest prayer I can pray. I don't know what I'm praying. And that's a good thing. Because I'm praying in the spirit. He goes on. But my mind is, is, is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I got it. I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray like everybody else also. I will, I will, I will also pray with, with, with my mind. I'll pray in what I understand, but I know there's some things I don't understand. So I'm going to pray in my spirit. Now he says it's unfruitful. I want to make sure I make a point here. Paul didn't know what he was saying. Uh, you, you hear this, well, they prayed in, in tongues and they, it was a different language and they knew that there was a different language and they knew what they were saying. No, he didn't. He says this is unfruitful. I don't know what I'm saying. My mind doesn't understand what I'm doing. And he goes on and he says here, I will sing with my spirit. And I will sing like everybody else too. Now you have to remember, the Apostle Paul is dealing with a church that, that had gotten these gifts out of order and he says, I would rather come to you and tell you five words in my understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Tell you five things that will give you instruction, five words that will give you instruction. So he's dealing with it here. He says, here's how I do it. Here's the importance of tongues to me. The importance of tongues to me is so I can pray in the purest of prayers, that I can praise in the purest of praise. This is what tongues is, is important to me, Paul says. I love speaking in tongues, Paul says. I love to pray, I, 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 I get to pray, I get to praise, I, I, I love to, to, to speak in tongues. <laughs> um, have you ever been in a, in a group of people where they sang in tongues? It's, it was, it's the most toughest thing. When, when, when we were really pretty heavy in the gifts of the Spirit working and functioning here, I couldn't get people to, to sing in the Spirit. It was the, the most difficult thing. Uh, but I've been to conferences where it was a Pentecostal type conference or a charismatic type conference where most of the people there spoke in tongues and they would sing in the spirit. I'm telling you, it, it's like being in heaven. It's like hearing angels sing. I mean, what do you think it's going to be like anyway when we get to heaven? All these different people are singing in all their different kinds of languages, all these multitudes and multitudes and, and, and millions and millions of people all singing to God. What do you think it's going to be like? It's going to be like tongues. He says, I want to sing in my spirit. I want to sing in my understanding. See, people have different responses to, to the things of God. People have different responses to, to the gifts of the spirit and the things of God. And most of the time it's because of, of how they've been trained and how their instructor did it. And so they'll respond. And so weird things do happen in church with the gifts of the spirit. And so I'm constantly, when the gifts of the spirit begin to move and things kind of do, and they will, they go kind of crazy sometimes. I always start checking it out. You know what's happening here? What's going on? I have to check its authenticity and see if it's really weird or not. And, and, I, and I'll know. I always know because I just know something in my, in my heart isn't right, in my spirit isn't right. And so I'll adjust it. But the main thing is, is that even though things do kind of go crazy, Paul says don't ever stop it and be thankful for it. Here's what Paul, the apostle, said in 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank my God why? Why is he thanking his God? Tell, tell me what he says. Why is he thanking his God? Because I think I speak with tongues more than you all. Y'all? Y'all? I speak with tongues more than you all. I thank God that I'm a sign. I thank God that, that when I speak in tongues, I know I'm saved. I speak in, when I speak in tongues, I'm a sign not only to others, but I'm a sign to myself that I am saved of God. I, I thank God that I have a gift of tongues so that when God can use me to speak to a congregation through tongues, 
I thank my God that I, that I, I can, I can you be used by God to interpret tongues in church. I thank my God for that. I thank my God that I have this prayer ability, this prayer life. I have this ability to pray and praise God in the purest of sense. I thank my God for that, Paul said. Are you thankful? Are you thankful for tongues? I am. Have you ever thanked God for your tongues? I have. And I know I speak in tongues more than you all. The fourth one I've got to, I've got to just kind of skip, but, but anyway, what, what, it, uh, what, it, what it's talking about here is the fourth reason for tongues. I'm just going to let you read it and finish up the notes because I want to pray for people. Uh, speaking in tongues declares the wonderful, the wonders of God, not the insanity of man. See, see tongues is it's like if, if, you, if you talk in tongues, you're insane. You've you got this mental problem or something, you know, it, it, but it's not. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, I'm just going to kind of tell you what's, what it's saying here. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, and it filled the room with, with fire, and, and, and all of these things happened, and, and all 120 of them began talking in tongues. And, and, and they, they, they received the, the Spirit of God. As, and I, and I want to make sure, Galen, put that up there for me, please. The last part, the last slide of 2, 1 through 4, the second one. Okay, that's it. You see that bottom line there? Began to speak. In other tongues, as the Spirit, what? The Spirit enabled them. Now, the, I want to, I'll just, the reason I'm wanting to point this out to you is the Spirit will not force you, it will enable you. Big difference. Because a lot of people think you've got to shake and you've got to jerk and you've got to roll and you've got to do crazy weird things. No, 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 no. The Spirit is a gentle man, it's the Spirit of Christ. Jesus was never out of control. The Spirit of God is never out of control, He's not going to make you go out of control. And, and, so, and so understand that. He will enable you. What does that mean, Delbert? You will hear syllables in your spirit. You will hear words in your spirit. And those are your tongue. Paul didn't say, when I pray in tongues. He said, when I pray in a tongue. He had a specific tongue. You have a specific tongue. And what you will hear in your spirit are those syllables, all those words. And you're going to question it. You're going to say, this is crazy. No, that's your mind. Kick your mind out of gear. Bypass your mind. And just listen to your spirit. Because whether you speak in tongues today or you speak in tongues 10 years from now or 11 years from now, that's what you're going to speak in. Those are the syllables. Those are the words. He will enable you, not force you, to speak in tongues. They spake. The Spirit enabled. It goes on there. They went out on the streets of Jerusalem, and they went out, and all these nations and all these people were there talking in tongues. I mean, they weren't ashamed of their tongues. They just went out. And so they said, look at the wonderful works of God. When I talk in tongues, you know, the, the, the society wants me to think I'm goofy. I'm weird. God thinks I'm declaring his wonderful work. Wonderful works of God. And I edify myself. I build myself up. I, 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 don't, you know, I know some of you are, are, are speak in tongues. And, and if you've ever spoken in tongues for a period of time, it's impossible to be down. You, you cannot stay down. You, you build yourself up. You can't be depressed speaking in tongues. When you're talking about the wonderful works of God, you can't be depressed. You build yourself up in these things. I'm telling you, it's God's given us tongues. Number one is a sign. You're a sign. Wherever you go, these things follow you. Number two, he's given it as a gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit so that you can be used to speak to the congregation of people in a prophetic way from God, from the Holy Spirit himself. Number three, it, it, it's given to you as in the purest way of prayer and the purest way of praise that you could possibly have. Number four, it's given to you to declare the wonders of God wonderful works of God. You're not insane. See, some of those people that when they went out on the streets mocked them and said they've, been, they've drunk too much wine. Who missed God? The tongue talker or the person who mocked? Those that made fun of the tongue talker? See, I'm a tongue talker. I'm a holy roller. I talk in tongues more than you all. And I'm proud of it. I'm not missing God. Now, some people might. So I want to end my time talking and start praying for some people right now by asking you the question that the Apostle Paul asked 
those people in Ephesus, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? What I want to do is pray for two groups of people. One, people who have never spoken in tongues, but you, you, you see that it's something that you really want to, to experience. You, you see that it's something that you want in your life. I want to pray for you. But I also want to pray for a second group of people. There's some people like me that, you know, we leak. In, in Acts chapter 2, they received the, the Holy Spirit spoken in tongues. But in Acts chapter 4 and 5, they, they got it again. <laughs> they were refilled. We leak. And some of us haven't prayed in, in the Spirit and tongues in a while. I want to pray for you too. I want to do what Paul did to these Ephesians. I want to lay hands on you. And I want you to come. And I just want to just minister to you and see what the Lord has for you. And again, one thing I didn't show you, they were sitting in that upper room. <laughs> I didn't have time. They were sitting. Don't get locked into how it's going to have to happen for you. I was kneeling at a folding chair. These guys were sitting in, in Acts chapter 2. The, the people in Ephesus were standing. I don't care. It, it, don't get locked into how it's got to happen for you. Just let it happen. It's for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. If you'd like for me to pray for you for either the initial receiving of the Holy Spirit with tongues or because you, you just have it released in a while and you just want to, to have a freshness of it, I want to pray for you too. So would you be coming? I want to pray and you be coming as I pray. Father, I ask you now in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want to tell you is my wife struggled. She was hearing the words in her mind or in her spirit, actually. But she thought she was mimicking someone else. And so it took her weeks to get work through that. What you're...